Hello. So today we are going to talk about probably my least favorite thing to do, and that's modifying a circuit board. Um, so you're probably wondering why we're going to modify this particular board. Well, this is the control board for this tiny little LCD screen, which is what I need to put inside BMO's main body here. And the problem with doing that is this board, if you flip it over, it shows you the input pin values. Probably can't read that, but it says it takes 12 volts. And I don't have 12 volts. I use this header that I created on my expansion board for the uh, Pi Zero to supply the analog TV signal. It doesn't use HDMI, so that's what this board does. It uses and you've probably seen these RCA jack. That's what it's supposed to use. You plug that in there and then plug in those big ugly plugs. Don't got room for that. So fortunately the Pi allows you to tap into the same thing using uh, the two pins you'll see on the, uh, the Pi board which uh, you have to solder in yourself. Those little mystery pins that you can do. But this will only supply 5 volts. I don't have 12 volts to put into the thing. So, there are a couple of tutorials around the internet. So I, I followed the one on um, Adafruit, which recommends removing the 5 volt regulator there. Um, what this does is it takes 12 volts and drops it down to 5. Uh, technically, it can take 4.75 volts minimum. So, since the Pi is going to be outputting around 5.2, 2.5 volts based on the, the uh, power module I'm using. You should theoretically be able to drop that to 5, but I think the way they do the circuitry, they, they put in some resistors, so it is going to drop below 5 volts and it, it won't work. It has to be at least 6 volts I found for this thing to turn on. So let's, we're going to remove this thing. And to do that, it's a little tricky. So let's get to it. All right, first things first, uh, this board, this slides into this little connector here. So when it comes, you got you to gotta remove this from here. You don't want to try doing anything with this connected, but this is very flimsy, so be careful not to break it. And this little connector here is really tough to move, and it's easy to break it, so you got to be careful. you got to pull it forward. And, uh, that's why I don't like messing with these things. but. The first thing you got to do is somewhat counterintuitive. Uh, you have to put more solder on these pins. That's what you got to do. And the reason for that is we're going to remove the solder. So you're asking why would you put more solder on if you're just going to remove it? And the reason is you want more mass. Uh, there isn't enough mass to melt the current solder on there. So we're going to glom it on here pretty good. Kind of ugly. And now I'm going to use some tweezers and um, let's rotate it this way. And I'm going to grab it. There's other ways to do this. You can put a small little screwdriver and try and pry it up. Heat those up and they should release all at once. I can kind of rotate it back. And I don't want to heat it up too much because I don't want to rip the pads off. At the same time I don't want to pull it too hard because the pads on the opposite side are not going to be melted. I just want it to bend slightly and lift up so it'll disengage. So I use a fairly long soldering pen. Yeah, I think that's up a little bit. Then we gotta do the other side. Just don't want to hit any of the other components with this solder. I don't care if I destroy the regulator. It's kind of the point. Get it off of there. And do the same thing on this side. That one moved up. Now this should just pop off. Let's 
Alright, so we got it off. And you kind of just want to clean up some of that solder blob. And to do that, clean your solder tip off. Use this little guy here, and he'll just remove the excess. And then clean them up a little bit. Now if you did it right, you should see eight silver pads if you did it right. Um, and not <laughs> some other color, which means you ripped the pad off. Um, here's the little guy right here. I don't see any pads stuck to him, but don't like doing that. It always feels abusive. All right, so assuming we did this right, the key now is this pin right here is the five volt out. And we need to get what was the 12 volt into there. Now we can tie a jumper wire from here to the 12 volt pin. There's one thing I'm gonna do first. Uh, I don't like this six pin connector. Um, and the reason I don't like it is I don't need six pins. I need I need four. Um, so I'm going to remove this JST connector. It's not necessary, but it eliminates confusion on where to put the plug because if I, if I use a four uh, four pin uh, plug, I, I can put it anywhere on those six pins and, and sort it out. So realistically I should just remove that, which isn't too hard, but you are going to have to destroy that plug. Alright, so to do that you can try and desolder each of these and then pull the thing out. I have various success doing that. I'll try it. I don't think it's going to work. Again, if you want to do it this way, solder is your friend. Let's try those four. Get it hot, put a tip on, and then pull it out. You try and keep that from rotating. Get it hot, put the tip on, and move the solder. Clean the um, excess solder out of your thing here because it, it will drip out. Two down. Number four. You get a really good seal on this thing. You can get it out. The problem with this, it's like there's always a weak link. There's always one guy that's really tight in there. Okay, so if you're lucky, then this can just get pulled out. If you rock it, you might break the remaining solder. I really don't like doing it this way, but let's see if it works. It's pretty loose. And realistically, I only care about these four over on this side. Huh. I think I got lucky. It usually never works that easily for me. 
I would consider myself lucky and buy a lottery ticket today. Uh, the other option is you just if you, you take a pair of snips and cut these off and then just heat these individually and pull them out. It's actually a lot faster. So, so why did I go through all that trouble? Because I would like my headers to match uh, these little four jobs. So this is going to go on here. And now, since these are both keyed, I don't have a chance of screwing up where it goes. Caution though. You have to look at the back of the board and look at the voltages. This is 12 ground ground AV1. It's exactly what I want because on this board it goes 5 ground ground AV1 is for replacing the 12 with 5. I've seen these boards use an alternate pin setting where 12 is over here and uh, they redid the traces on although these board numbers are exactly the same the pinouts are different one clue is to look at this and when you plug it in presumably this will be the 12 volts the, the red and then the ground will be black they should be there they're, they're bare leads on my other one I had a cable where they'd be on the other side so check the cable and, and check the back uh, make sure you haven't done anything or short anything out. The fun part now is how do we get the 5 volts from here all the way over to here. It looks to me like the what is now the 5 volt band, the 12 volt, what do you want to call it, has a trace that goes out to this what looks like a resistor. It turns out to be a 0 ohm jumper. So I think we can just run a jumper from here to the to the 5 volt pad do to do that I'm going to use some of this silicone wire well uh, silicone coated wire the reason why I like this is it's very floppy very easy to work with um, in the first I'm, I'm going to cut a length I think is much longer than I need First thing I want to do is tin that lead. And what that means is putting a little bit of solder on there to firm it up. Just get it started with some solder. This is a little tricky. There you got to get it on there and not solder bridge it onto something else. So I like to run it through these two. Uh, what are those? Anyways, I used to know the name of those things. Grr. Tug. All right, it's on there. Now, like I said, I think the next one uh, you can. I haven't started that yet. We'll do that next. We can we can attach it to the back directly to the 12 volt if we want. But I'm thinking of just going straight for this solder tab here. I think that would be easier. Or if I screw it up, I'm going to have to do it again. Some 
solder on the lead. There we go. I believe that is all we need to do. Oh, no, we do have one other thing, don't we? Gotta solder this guy in. All right, so after double checking the header, I did realize I had it backwards. Um, so always double check anything that's keyed like these things so you don't solder them in backwards. So now that I'm confident I got it right, I can solder it down. Good. The way this thing goes together is this slides into there. Should go in pretty easily and then you push down this tab. And now, all right, it's testing time. Um, to do that, I got my little test rig here. It's not a little test rig. It is basically a BMO ripped apart. If you saw distant lands, this is pretty much what you saw. Um, how does this go? Okay, like this. Key is I want to plug in my header. Now I know that's the 5 volt side. So this cord should wind up over here. So if I trace it all the way back, it does. So I know I'm wired correctly. That's the important part. Before I blow anything out, I've done it before. So to power this thing, I'm not going to use the battery. I'm going to use this uh, USB battery pack. I, I love these. These are not 5 volt battery packs. These are 5.25 volt packs. You need that for the Pi. So, oh, oh, every battery pack is going to be 5 volts. This is When it, when it gets boost converted, it's, it's 5.25 as well. So let's plug it in and see if it boots. Little boot, but will it show the screen? Hey, I think we got something here. So it's booting, and we have video now uh, on the screen. So that's how that works. Uh, you have to do this one change. It's, it's a pain, but it makes all of this work together. That's pretty awesome. So don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more of this type of stuff. It really helps keep the channel going. I'll move on to the next step.